Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com and I have here the Samsung Rugby Smart from AT&T. This is a rugged phone. It's, it's waterproof, shockproof, temperature proof. It can withstand pretty much anything you put it through, at least that's what Samsung says. Now the question is, is it really as rugged as it's supposed to be? Is it as durable as, as it's supposed to be? We're going to find that out in the full review, but the interesting thing is that it's actually a pretty decent smartphone. It ships with Android 2.3, a 1.4 gigahertz Snapdragon processor, and a camera that captures HD video. So overall, it looks like a good phone. It seems like a good phone. I'm going to tell you guys in the review if it actually is a good phone and if it's as durable as they say it is. Before we start the review, I have to say a special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile. They send us the phone that we add to our One Paw Bandit game, which is the game where you guys can win free phones. One of the great things about Best Buy Mobile is that when you buy a phone from them, you don't have to worry about rebates because the price on the tag is the price you pay. So thank you Best Buy Mobile for being so awesome. Thank you guys for watching this review. Uh, now the phone is powered by a 1.4 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon S2 processor and then uh, coupled with that you have 512 megabytes of RAM. And I've noticed that performance is, is overall decent. Now there are some times if I have several apps open, uh, it does kind of slow down or hang a little bit whenever I close an app and I want to go home. It may kind of take just a second or two to refresh everything, um, but really nothing too bad. It's it's definitely something that you're going to notice every once in a while. It's not completely perfect and seamless, but for the most part, very fine performance, little to no lag, um, just a couple of hangups here and there. I run a couple of uh, benchmark apps so you can get some numbers, kind of get an idea of what performance will be like. So we'll start this one. Okay, so on this test we have a score of 3769. Let's go to another one. We'll do a quadrant standard test. Okay, and here we have on the quadrant standard test, we have a score of 1,444. So let's do one more Smart Bench 2012, and we'll see what score we get here. Okay, and finally here we have on Smart Bench a productivity index score of 1,078. Um, interestingly, the gaming index score is pretty decent at 2,212. It has a Adreno 205 GPU, so gets a pretty good score on the gaming index, but as you can see, productivity is about 1,078. So, you know, from these scores, you can tell decent device, not terrible by any means, but, you know, there may be some times when you have just a little bit of lag. Try to give you guys some real, uh, real world tests here. We'll go to the web browser, take a look at pinch to zoom, and then we'll also take a talk about data and web browsing itself. Um, so this is an HSPA Plus device uh, capable of theoretical speeds of 14.4 megabits per second. I'll show you guys my speed test results. AT&T, whenever I test AT&T devices in the Dallas area, um, speeds are inconsistent. So that's true of, of any AT&T device. And I had the same results with this one. Um, but you know, as you can see, pinch to zoom, pretty smooth, you know, even though the page is still loading, relatively smooth, just, you know, minimal checkerboarding. But you know, like I said, the page is still loading. Okay, so we're done loading the page. Again, I can easily zoom out. Just a little bit of checkerboarding. So you can kind of see real world examples of how that processor, how it performs overall pretty good. But as you can see, it just kind of hangs just a little bit, but really, you know, nothing to complain about. I can zoom in, select a link, zoom out, wait for that to load. Um, but web browsing has been pretty decent and the processor does pretty well. Now let me show you guys my, uh, my speed test results. If we go back, wait for this to refresh. Okay, so here are some of my speed test results. And uh, they've been good, but you know, again, kind of inconsistent. Uh, so I have kind of averages here about five to 700 kilobits per second. Then I have a couple of highs of 1.52 uh, megabits per second, then back down to 1.2. Then here I have another high of 1.8. So the highs are decent, you know, about 1.5 to 2, which is which is pretty good for an HSPA Plus device. It still could be better, you know, I'm expecting 2 to 4 uh, megabits per second, but still, you know, 1 to 2, not bad. But then it's inconsistent, you know, I have lows of 500, 600 kilobits per second. So those are the results that I've gotten 
uh, in the Dallas area. Now, now obviously, you know, speeds are going to vary depending on coverage in your area. Um, but, you know, for me, they've, they've been good. I wish they were a little better and a little less inconsistent. Uh, but so far, they've, they've been pretty good. So let's move on and, uh, and talk about the camera. On the back here, we have a 5 megapixel autofocus camera with an LED flash and a couple of features like panorama and night mode. You also have a front facing camera, 1.3 megapixel front facing camera for uh, video chatting. Uh, this rear facing camera actually captures HD video, 720p HD video. I've uploaded a video sample to our YouTube channel. It's also on phonedog.com. So you can check that out and see what, uh, see what video quality is like and audio quality. Uh, but let's talk about uh, the still photos. I have a couple of outside shots here taken on a, on a fairly sunny day. You can see uh, the colors actually came out uh, pretty well. I go over to another picture here. You can see the greens are very green. The only thing I'm disappointed by is uh, the detail. Once you get close, you can kind of see that it starts to get blurry, um, even from you know not zooming in, just looking at the picture straight on. The detail isn't excellent, but still the colors came out uh, very well. You can see this picture; it's it's even more soft. It has kind of this soft hue to it. So I'm kind of disappointed by the clarity. Now, you know, video quality, HD video quality, again, you can watch that video. Not the best, <laughs> definitely not the best. Uh, video was not too terribly bad, but the audio quality was pretty terrible. Um, but you can, you know, take a look and for still photos, I'm pretty impressed with it. And then it's nice to have that front facing camera. So on, more on the back here, we'll, um, open up the battery cover and we'll take a look at the battery. The phone ships with a uh, 1650 milliamp hour battery and uh, take this off. So there's the battery right there. Uh, 1650 milliamp hour battery. Samsung estimates that you should get <clears throat> eight hours of talk time or 16.7 days of standby time. Now, battery life, that's something that's gonna vary person to person depending on your usage habits. For me, I got pretty good battery life uh, out of this battery. Now, you know, being a 4G device, it's not gonna have the best battery life. That's true of, of any phone or any 4G phone. But still, I was able to use it for a full day, you know, unplugged it from the charger in the morning and used it all the way into the evening. I did have to charge it every night, but with me, you know, checking my email, having email and Twitter sync, uh, syncing in the background, along with, you know, widgets constantly updating, with, you know, pretty heavy use, I was able to use it for a full day. So I'm pretty impressed by the battery life. Uh, in terms of memory, the phone itself has uh, four gigs of internal storage. Uh, 3.4 gigabytes are available to the user. There are some pre-installed apps. So out of the box, you actually have 3.4 gigabytes, but still four gigs of internal use. And then with the micro SD card slot, which is actually underneath the battery, uh, you can have an additional 32 gigs of, uh, of memory. It doesn't come with a card, uh, but you can still add your own card. So that's pretty much it with the Samsung Rugby Smart from AT&T. Uh, and overall, I've been fairly impressed with it. You know, I mentioned in terms of durability, it's not as durable as other rugged phones on the market. However, I think it should be fine for most people, most people who have a hectic or kind of just a rough lifestyle. It should be fine, but you know, definitely not as durable as I expected. I was disappointed on some fronts. Overall performance is great. You know, you saw the test results and the real world uh, performance there. Kind of hung up a little bit, but really overall, everything is smooth, not a whole lot of problems. And then the 3.7 inch Super AMOLED display is gorgeous. And the price isn't bad too, $99 on contract. You know, most rugged phones are fairly expensive, you know, not necessarily because of the caliber of the device, but simply because it is a rugged phone, rugged phone and so it requires a little more work in terms of the hardware. So $99, it's a decent phone, it's a rugged phone, it's a good price. I would check it out if you need something that's, you know, waterproof and can handle your rough lifestyle. That's the Rugby Smart. Thanks guys for watching this review. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message on Twitter at phone dog underscore Sydney, or you can leave a comment to this video. I usually try to check those out. But thanks guys for watching. Keep on phone dog.com for more news updates and reviews. I'm Sydney, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.